Here's the front of the Marantz uh, CD player that I own. This is a CD40. It has a very nice chip in it. Sounds pretty good. Um, I think it shares some componentry with its much more expensive brother. Um, now the problem I have with this is that when I was opening the drawer it would come out a little bit and then it would stutter and then it would come out and it was making this funny kind of clanking sound. And I did a little bit of research online and discovered that the culprit for that is this wheel. Now you can see that that's broken there. Well this wheel is what drives the tray and what was happening is the wheel is driven by a belt which runs in this groove here that was attached to a motor. The motor spins the wheel at the right time and these teeth engage with the tray and they'd start to push it out and then when the teeth were missing it would stop and it would sort of stutter and then it would start to pick up a little bit on these teeth and then eventually as this came round these teeth would almost grind into their grooves um, until they made a proper connection and then it would continue to open the, the drawer. So this would happen three or four times while the tray slowly came out. So this bit here was the problem and uh, this particular CD mechanism which I'll show you when I open it up is a fairly popular mechanism. I think it's quite a good one and you see that mechanism in a number of um, different CD players. This one is a Marantz but I think it's also in a lot of Philips and a number of others. So here's the replacement part. It took me about three weeks to get this. It came from China. I ordered it on eBay. However, this little bit here is a, um, it's supposed to be attached to the top here and it arrived broken. It's a different kind of plastic. It's slightly more flexible which might be a better thing. Uh, it also came with a new drive belt. So I waited three weeks for that. That arrived and that was broken so that was a waste of time. And then I ordered another one which is quite a bit more expensive. Um, I'll open this one for you. Uh, you can see it's the same colour as this one. So it's almost identical. Although it's not made by the original manufacturer um, they've done everything they can to duplicate the look of it which is quite nice as opposed to this one which was a white colour. So this one's complete, I don't have any problems with it, so that's the one I'm going to be installing. So if you hang on, I'll show you how it's done. Here's the listing on eBay that I used to buy this. It says in the description that it's for a Philips and a Marantz uh, CD player. And it's for a CDM4. And as I said earlier, there's lots of uh, CD players that use that particular mechanism for loading the CD. Um, I might be able to find a list so you can tell whether your CD player has it or not. It's cost me uh, £3.16, which is $4.20 US, and um, it came from Hong Kong, and again it took two or three weeks to arrive. So I waited almost six weeks before I could replace this. Um, but there it is, that's sometimes the way these things go, so now I'm going to show you how to do it. The CD player, when you turn it round, has two screws. However, they're not uh, Phillips screws. You're going to need a set of these. Um, there we go. This has a star head, a small star head, which is what you need. It's a sort of tamper proof screw. And then this comes off, and you can see inside. Now, in order to get to the place where the wheel goes, it's normally in here, you're going to have to get this tray out. So the next thing would be to take these three screws out here. There's one in the middle. So the three screws came out, you just have to lift the fascia, There's the on off button is here, you have to clear it from that. Um, looking at this, I'll just remove the spring and take this out. And once you've done that, the drawer will slide free. The replacement wheel goes right in here. 
and this cog, or the sprocket or the teeth, face towards the tray. Now there's a nipple here that fits right in this piece here, there's a hole right behind this little plastic bit that sticks up and there's a bigger hole which engages with this over here, right up down here. Here's the motor, now you have to select one of the rubber bands or the drive belts, um, I've got two as I explained earlier. Now one end goes around the motor, the other end goes around the wheel. Basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to engage this and this in the correct place. So it's a little bit tight so the way I've done it is I've engaged this side first. I'm just going to pull this plastic thing forward with my finger. There we go and that snaps in. Give this a few turns just to make sure that the belt's the right way. So along the side of the tray you can see the teeth here, they're going to engage with the wheel. There's a, a groove that runs along here and that's going to engage with these two bits that stick out and there's two more back there. They will be sliding in here. Now at this point you might consider putting a bit of grease on there. Um, I personally like to do that. Not very much, but just enough to stop any wear. For that I, I just grab myself one of these. I'm using a substance called Super Lube, it's a synthetic grease, it's an American product. Just going to run that along there. Keep it in the groove if you can, just enough. If you feel so inclined, I suppose you could put just a little bit on the teeth of the wheel. I'm not suggesting it's going to make any major difference. It might make it operate slightly more quietly. First thing you must do is place this inside here. And you can see there are four diagonal slots that these four tangs slide into. We go. When you've done that, line the bottom, not the top, it's easy to make that mistake, it's got to be the bottom grooves. Slide that in, lift it slightly and you can lower it down onto the drive wheel. Give that a few turns. There we go, that goes in like that. The last thing is you replace this. The spring is still here where I left it. Make sure the little disc is facing down. From a forward position drop it in and lift up the spring, hook it onto the little tab there. There we go. Goes like that. And the next thing is to replace this. So you engage your three slots and try to get your on-off switch coming through as well. It's a little bit of a fiddle. There we go. So three tangs underneath here engaged. The on-off switch is in the right place and then you can put your three screws back. Don't forget you'll need one of these special drivers. One. Don't over tighten any of this, it's only plastic. It's an interesting um, interior. There's a lot of space on the right hand side here with nothing going on. There we 
we go, that was a bit fiddly. The last thing is the lid. There we go. That's it. And then I've got two screws in here. Tighten this lid down. Uh, it would appear that there's a screw hole in the middle there. I don't have a screw for it, so at some point someone's taken that out. If I find one, I'll replace it. So, that should have done the repair and it should be okay now. I've plugged it in, let's see if it works. Nice and smooth, quite quiet. Whoops. Let's close it. Seems to be working very well. I like this CD player, it sounds very nice. And it's got a nice big clear display. You can see exactly what's going on. I don't have a remote control for it, but it, unlike some of these newer uh, devices, it has everything you need right here on the side to play, fast forward, skip tracks and all that sort of thing. And a pause button. Um, there's also some programming buttons here for various uh, track uh, arrangements. The only remaining thing that may be of interest to people watching this is which CD players uh, use this transport. So I'm going to see if I can find that out for you. It's all the Marantz ones. There's a lot of Philips there. There's some Technics at the bottom. Well, that's about it for this video. I uh, hope that was useful. So if you have any of those uh, CD players that were listed in the list, or you've got any problems with your drawer not opening smoothly, or making a funny clicking or rumbling sound, it's most likely that drive wheel has deteriorated. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks very much, and see you soon.